Alrighty. Okay, so we're gonna start off again. So sorry, guys. Just um, once lunch was over, just my heart was burning in there, and I'm a very emotional person. I love to cry. Who knows me knows I love to cry. And I do it a lot with my father. So Ephesians 2, verse 8. I know I'm at the right teaching, right? I know our team first is Ephesians. Um, capital, I don't know what I am. I'm trying to speak Spanish while I'm up here. <laughs> Ephesians 2, and we're going to start at verse 8. And I have a different version. It is the NIV. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Why start off with this verse instead of the theme verse, right? Well, let's just say this is one of the truths that at some point, really enlighten my eyes. I was already a born again believer, just like the people of Ephesus, where in fact, actually the book of Ephesians is one of my favorite books. Just a fun fact for you guys to remember. <laughs> I have read the book so many times and many of the times I would just feel so edified, so hyped up. And I'm sure that when you guys take the time that you guys will have, the same thing will happen. It's just so much in there. But every single time I would come around Ephesians 2.8, I would kind of want to skip it. I was like, oh yeah, there it's coming. Change the page. But it followed me everywhere I went. Everywhere. When I mean everywhere, it was everywhere. And I started to really get like, okay, God, why do you keep putting this first out there for me? To the point that I know you guys know Julian Soto. He one New Year's Day made these magnets and they had verses on them. And yeah, you're guessing right. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, you want a you want a magnet? It has a verse on it. I'm like, yeah, of course. So I extend my hand, and while I'm extending it, I'm talking to God. Okay, God, what do you gotta say to me? I pick it up, and it was Ephesians two eight, and I'm just like, okay, God, why again? I wanted to go back in the box, in the basket, throw it back in there, and get another one. But then I remembered. I'm like, no, I asked, what do you want to say to me? So that was what held me back from putting it back. <laughs> well, time went by until one day I finally allowed God to show me exactly what it was that he wanted to teach me by that. I was trying to do it the other way around. I was trying to perfectionize myself from the, the outside in, instead of doing it from the inside out. And God didn't want me to live like that. He wanted to set me free. He wanted me that I did the stuff, but out of love, not of trying to reach him or trying to, oh my goodness, win it all. Because he knew that it was tiring. And it, for him, it was going to be a lot easier if I just went to him and I knew that if I went the way he wanted me to go, it was gonna be perfect. Well, I had not lived that verse. And throughout my walk, I, you know, when you, you come to God for the first time, I remember the day that I was born again and they ex expose the scriptures to me. You see, you know, Romans 10, 9, 10, like Jeff was saying, saying, now we have that and we can do that to come to a believer or whatever it might be, you can do that to others. But we can just hand it to them to read it. But when they really grab onto it and make it their own, it's something else. 
and we see that in their lives. So when we see that, it brings light and you see it. So I grabbed onto that verse and I realized it was by grace. It was what he had given me, not what I could have done for him. And if we go back to our theme verse, which is Ephesians 1, starting verse, verse 3. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms, because we are united with Christ. Verse 4, even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. And how great is that? Five, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. Six, so we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. Seven, he is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son, and forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us, along with all wisdom and understanding. Verse 9, God has now revealed to us his mysterious will, will regarding Christ, which is to fulfill his own and good plan. Verse 10, and this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ. Everything in heaven, on earth, Verse 11, furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For he chooses us in advance, and he makes everything work out according to his plan. And trust me, his plans are so good. Verse 12, God's purpose was that we Jews, who were the first to trust in Christ, would bring praise and glory to God. 13, and now you Gentiles have also heard the truth. So not only for Jews, but for what? Gentiles. The good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identifies you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit, whom he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will forgive us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we could praise and glorify him. I know a lot of reading, but, but it's always a good reminder. Verse 15, ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, verse 16, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly. Verse 17, asking God, the glorious father of our Lord Jesus Christ to give you spiritual wisdom and insight that you might grow in your knowledge and I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. As we read, we see Paul's heart for the people. He understood that because he had been there. That prayer that Paul was doing, we were included. He was praying that our hearts, our inner core of where we will analyze anything we truly believe to be flooded with light his light because god is light so we understand that hope christ is coming back no doubt about that his word says it and it's true and it all has been done for us already paul prays that this fresh experience would enlighten the eyes of their hearts he prays their vision would be focused differently from the way of our natural human eyes, like Alien shared today. These enlightened eyes would see the hope of your salvation, the riches of our inheritance, and the power through which we are able to live the new life which we are called. Paul prayed for his siblings. That's you and me. So we can see life through a new lens. In his own salvation experience in Acts 9, 
like I believe we've shared sometime this weekend already, we talked about Paul and how he was physically blinded. Once the scales fell off, his vision was transformed. He understood a higher calling on his life. He saw former enemies as friends. He saw those who lived as he once did as lost souls in need of the gospel. He had a new hope for which to live. His new perspective transformed how he saw his circumstances. Himself, right? Knowing all he did before it. I always think about it, I'm like, man, I, you know, he grasped on to what God has said and was enlightened by it to change the, his mindset of himself. And sometimes that we can be so hard on ourselves, but he did it. And so we, so we can do it too. And the people around him making the gospel known as his goal. And I, many of us, Laylee and I here, she, that's her goal. And I know many of you guys have that same goal. He knew that he could not accomplish anything (laughs) in his own power, but through the power of the one who sent him. Through the power of the one who sends all of us, we all have that because of him. Paul's prayer expresses his desire that all believers have their own eyes open. Great example also we have to also pray for one another. The same way that Paul did. This is how we need to see how we need to live our lives as we interact with brothers and sisters in Christ, unsaved loved ones, and complete strangers. We need to see them through our enlightened eyes. As we face circumstances, because we're going to face some of them, of celebration and victory, or situations where we're just sad and feel defeated, we need to understand them through the light of the gospel. And about a week ago, um, I was sitting in my dining room table. I had just recently got a second degree burn and this year has, I think these past two years, I've gone through difficult situations. Very difficult situations. But I kept going to him. And he would bring his word and he would enlighten my eyes every single day. But that day, I was, it was just all coming to my head. It's like, oh, well, you know, like it, every single time the situation came, it was like, okay, no, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm going to keep going because God is with me and I'm going to keep going and we're going to keep going. But that day, I was just, I was just like, what is wrong with you? Are you okay? And I just start, oh, yeah. and I'm just, I'm just tired. Life is getting tired. And then I said, I got myself put together again. And I'm like, I'll be back. Went in my room. And I went back to God. Okay, God. I'm tired. But help me out here. And surely, he showed me Romans 8.18. And he said, what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal. It's like, what you're going through, Nelly, it's okay. But remember what I have done. I mean, I saved you when you were dead and I gave you life. I rescued you. And I will do that every single time. And I was like, okay, guys, sorry for forgetting that. I'm, I'm back. I'm back. Let's keep going. He said. <laughs> Knowing God's illumination provides principles to guide our emotions, not reverse. 
right? Not our emotions illuminating us. It's God's illumination provides principles to guide our emotions. Even as we deal with or view ourselves or our struggles and temptation and sin, our identity in Christ, who we are and what has been done for us, empower us to be honest and humble. We are not meant to live life alone. And I am thankful for Paul's example of how he prayed for his siblings in Christ and for myself as we strive to live in a community and make God's glory known through the gospel. Being enlightened is in the present tense indicating continual process and applying accumulated understanding of principles of scripture ready to be applied for experience. And I'm going to repeat that again because every single time I read that, just like gets me like, yeah, God, yes, yes. Being enlightened in the present is in the present tense. Indicating continuously process and applying accumulated understanding of principles of scriptures ready to apply to experience. And that is what exactly happened when I was enlightened with that one verse in Ephesians 2, 8. It allowed me to walk freely. And that's what God wants to do with every single one of us. And not only in the way, you know, we at work, or it's in every area of our lives. And it's so, like uh, Lalian said, we can just pray and expect because he says, I'm going to answer. You need wisdom, ask for it. So that is what I wanted to share, how God has enlightened my eyes and will continue to do with each and one of you like he has done because we can pray for each other and be there to uh, intercess, inter to have intercession um, for each and one of you guys. So I pray for you guys and I would like to pray now. God, I thank you for this wonderful time. Thank you, God, for being who you are and loving your children the way you do, for setting us free one <laughs> all the time, God, even when we ourselves decide to put ourselves in a spot where we can't clearly see. I thank you that we can put away emotions and we can just continue to look at your word, which brings enlightenment to our hearts and to our lives, God. Thank you for the knowledge that you give us so we can actually put it to practice and live it, God. I thank you for the way that you continue to show yourself to us and how important it is to have vision that you have shown us, God. That you see us the way that you saw Christ, God, and that we are who you say you are, God. No matter what society says or whatever it is that, you know, the big picture that people place and that want to um, have you be, God, that we can just look at each other just the way that you saw Christ, God. I thank you for all this, and I gave you thanks, God, for just being so faithful always over and over again. Amen.